to all three people who are watching this. Today's video will be another painting video, but this time with a voiceover. I'll just be pointing out some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. So first of all, I like to tape my borders to get a nice crisp edge at the end. It just looks a lot cleaner and almost like a Polaroid this way. Another trick I've learned is to paint over the taped areas so that once you remove the tape, you'll end up with a nice clean edge. Otherwise, if you don't do this step, you might notice that your paint bleeds over a little even though you taped it. So we're just gonna fast forward until the paint is dry. Now we'll move on to the sketching. I don't like to use a lead pencil or a graphite pencil or anything like that because I've noticed that it tends to smudge when I put paint over it. I'm not sure if I'm just using a bad pencil or whatever, but I just use a fine tip brush to map out the general areas that I'll be blocking in. And I don't spend too much time or detail on this because we'll just be painting it over anyway. So this is just a general map. One thing I would do different looking back at this is choose maybe a lighter color than the blue because when I put the yellow over it, it sort of showed up. So either a lighter blue or just use the yellow to begin with. Once I'm done the sketch, I move on to blocking the basic colors. So if you think of it as layers, I like to start with the one that's furthest away from you and move forward. In this picture, you can break it up into a few layers, one being the sky, the second one being the buildings, and then the windows, walls, and like everything on the inside. So right now I'm just doing the sky, and you don't have to be too precise with this. You can see where I mapped out the lines of where the, the window beams are going to be. So I make sure to paint over it a little because I know I'm going to be fixing up that line later, and I'd rather paint too much than too little and then having to go back and match the color again, which is a hassle. And then you'll notice it cuts off because I ran out of space on my phone, so I had to deal with that before filming again, which is why it jumps to the next scene. But all I did was block out the windows, or the buildings a little bit, and add some lights and darks. So I'm just gonna fast forward this again, but the process is just of me painting in little blocks to make like abstract windows. Again, this is the background, so I'm not going to be too precise with anything here. We're just making general shapes and lines to signify that they're buildings, but not like super high definition ones, yeah? Okay, and then the next part, I accidentally filmed on the time lapse setting, which is lower quality and a little smaller than the other screen, so that's why the window suddenly minimized. But, um,. Here I'm just moving on to paint the interior, and again, I'm starting with the big flat areas of color and working my way to the smaller details as I go. And we're back to the big screen. After the general colors of the wall were laid out, I started to paint the details. So like the shadows you see on the windowsills and the shadow of the ceiling and those kinds of things. I found this picture on Pinterest, which led me to the Bright Side website, which led to a Reddit link, but the person has the person no longer exists, so I just have the picture now. I also cleaned up and brightened some of the areas that that I messed up on. <laughs> And again, I paint a little past where I drew the outline, just to make sure there's no white gaps when I paint the pillow and the bed. Here, I'm making a very thin, watered-down glaze that'll apply to the window, just to add a little more warmth into the scene outside, and create that glare slash reflection that we often see from the sun. And I'm just gonna fast forward the next part. I also changed up one of the decorations on the table to a plant because I feel like it would fit better. It's green anyway. I would consider the ceiling, walls, and windows as the mid-ground, and right now I'm just painting the foreground. Oh, throughout this whole process, you'll see that I'm not trying to copy the picture exactly. Like, you can tell it's the same picture, but I'm not, but I'm not focusing too hard on the proportions and small details like the 
the little toys in the window, the lace of the tablecloth, or anything like that. I just wanted to paint for fun, you know. I decided to exaggerate the colors of the highlights just to make the painting pop a little more and to add a little artistic effect. With a fine tip sharpie pen, I drew the... Oh, what's it called? line art paintings she had, or she or he had, line art drawings they had on the wall and the picture frame, just because I thought it would be easier. But I don't really like how thick the lines were. Maybe if I had a thinner pen, it would look better. Now it's almost done. We just need to put in the finishing touches. And I thought I was done, but there's actually one last thing that I needed to paint, which will tie the whole piece together and that is the fairy lights, specifically the shadows that it casts onto the wall. It just connects the outside, which is represented by the window, to the inside. Also, by associating the string lights to its shadow, we perceive the space as more three-dimensional, and it just gives a lot more depth and personality to the room. Okay, now the painting is done. Now we just have to do the most satisfying part, which is peeling the tape. And voila, it is finished. Now I'll just do a montage showing you the smaller details and intricacies and stuff. I just want to thank you guys for watching if you got to the end. I'll be posting every week on Thursdays, so please consider like and subscribing if you enjoyed today's video. Meow. I am a cat. Bye!